to be willing to ask ask questions and be open to ask questions or even just comments. It doesn't matter, right? It's Don't look at it in a bad way, but in a good way. We're going to talk a little bit about false converts. False converts. The difference between, let me say it like this. There are people right now as we speak who think they're saved, who said the prayer, who got in the water and are not saved, N-O-T, not saved. Amen. There are some things that the Lord gives us that we, we can know that we are saved. There are some things. I'm not going to give you all of them today, but I'll give you some of them. And I always tell people to check your birth certificate. That is biblical. Today we tell people, you say, you just said it, you are saved, and don't you question it. The devil is a lie. The Bible says that Paul said, examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. They, it, there are people, hear me clearly, those of you who are watching online, there are people who go to church every Sunday who love to hear good preaching. They say, I love the Lord. They really do. They feel that they are not saved a bit more than a man on the moon. I don't know if there's a man on the moon. Uh, amen. <laughs> and I don't know if that man on the moon is saved, but they're not saved a bit more than a man on the moon. They are false converts. And we're going to look at the signs. So I hope you have a pen. I'm going to give you four scriptures, five. All right, five texts. And we're going to cover this. And what I say to you today, we all from preacher to the pew, must all know that we are saved. Paul said, I hate, I would hate to have preached to others and find myself to be a reprobate. That word reprobate means a castaway. I've preached all this time, got online, I went, preached in the sermon, had all of these different things, and at the end of the day, the Lord looks at me and I wasn't saved. All right, so we're going to look at it. I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Prophetess, can you? I have you read that for me, sweetie. Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. Luke, Luke 14. chapter 14, 26. And we'll read on down to 33. Amen. Luke 14, 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, Yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. Wow. Did he say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus, did Jesus <laughs> just say, I got to hate my father and mother, my sister, my children, my brother? What do you mean? Jesus said we're supposed to love everybody, right? <laughs> That's what you're thinking. He's not talking mm -hmm. about hate them. What he's saying is, is that compared to your love for him, it would seem like hate. Because you you have you have made it up in your mind, I will not compromise my relationship with Jesus Christ for anybody. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's a story in the, a book. Uh, it's called Jesus Freaks. It's about martyrs. I know it's a weird name, but if you read it, all it is is little short stories about people who died for the name of Jesus Christ. And there's a story in the Roman times where this uh, the leader came up and said, you got to put... Uh, incense on the altar and say, Caesar is Lord. Caesar is God and honor him as God. If you don't do that, we will kill you. The lady, the lady looked at him and said, I will not do that. I only serve Jesus Christ. So they took, she had five children. They took her first child up on top of a, a high roof or something, something really high that if you fall off of it is instant death. And they said, just put this incense here and you're good. She said, I will not do it. They asked her in between each one of her, I think five, five or eight children. It was a pretty good amount of children. She let all of them die, and eventually they walked her up slowly and threw her off. And she said, for God I live and for God I die. I love my children, but not more than Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, if you don't do that, if you don't have that, that mindset, he says, you might be able to be my disciple. Is that what does he say, prophetess? What does he say in verse? Did he say you might be able to be my disciple? Cannot be my disciple. Wait a minute. So you can't. Cannot. That means it's impossible. 
I don't care how much, whatever you do other uh, uh, than that, that's good for God. I, I serve the Lord. I'm on the usher board. I do all of this. He said, no, you can't do it. Verse 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. This first sign that we're reading right now, I call it the sign of the cross. You have to love Jesus Christ and the cross more than your family, more than your own life. You have to be willing. What? Look at this. Leonard Ravenhill said, the late Re Leonard Ravenhill said, one thing you knew about a man that you saw with a cross, you were never going to see him again. That's a fact because they were going to execute him. We come to Jesus. People really think they can come to Jesus and keep certain things from their old life. Mm -mm. and not kill it and jesus said if you are not willing to bear this cross and come after me where are you going jesus to die the bible oh. says we are we die with jesus christ and then we are buried with him in baptism and then risen in newness of life but we have people today who have not died with him they didn't give up anything they gave up certain things they gave up this but they kept that and they didn't die so when they got in the water, they simulated the burial with Jesus, but they just went down in water and came up. They came, they went down a wet center center and they came up and they dried off as a dry center. They never changed. They just got in water. It was in the name of Jesus Christ, but they didn't turn it over. You come to Jesus with all of your issues and he, re he does not reject you. But the first thing he tells you to do is come and die to yourself. And if you don't do that, you won't. Go ahead, read the rest of it. He gives a very huge principle, and then we'll move to the next one. Go ahead. Luke 14, 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Uh-huh. Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Look at verse 31. 31 or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000 Uh huh. or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. Uh huh. So likewise, Whosoever be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Jesus said this. He said you essentially have to count up the cost. Mm. You say you want to be saved. Really, do you know what that means? Do you know what you have to give up? <laughs> Jesus, he accepts and he loves everybody. He loves everybody. But do you know how Jesus shows his love? He gave his life. He gave. But we want to say, Lord, we love you, but we don't want to give up our thing. And Jesus said, don't just start and say, okay, I'm get, I want to get saved. He said, count up the cost. He said, what man gets ready to build a building? You get ready to build a house and don't figure out if you got enough money to do it. Do you have <laughs> enough? Are you, what are you willing to give up? If you, are, are you willing to give up? It's going, what does it cost you? Everything. Mm -hmm. It cost everything to be his disciple. Jesus said, you cannot. He says, whoever is not willing to forsake all. So I tell you now, examine yourselves. What have you hold, held on to? If you are holding on to something that is against God's word, let me tell you to your face, you are not his. And when he comes back, the worst person in the world is the one that the person that thinks they're his and are not. Woo. That is worse. So this is why when Jesus looked at the rich man, the rich man who said, good master, how can I have eternal life? What did Jesus say? Go and sell everything you have. He made him give up everything. The dude mm -hmm. couldn't do it. He walked away. And did Jesus say, oh, come on, brother. Come on, man. Don't leave. He didn't say, you know what he did? He watched him leave. We don't teach this gospel. So we have a church full of false converts. And I'm going to show you 
the next scripture, the Lord is going to give us four type of people. And you're going to see these, these instances in the church today. They're not in the body of Christ. They are in the church building organizations, right? Let's look at it. Go with me to Mark chapter four. So the first one is the sign of the cross. If you're not willing to give up everything and follow him and die to everything, then you're not his. It's all or nothing. Hmm. All or nothing. Amen. Are y'all with me? Can y'all wave yes, at me sir. if y'all with me? It's all or nothing. So if you are if you are a believer today, it is important. It's imperative for you to look at your life and say, okay, did I give up everything? I didn't say be flawless. But you can't be a believer looking at something that God says is sin and saying, ah, but no, there is no but. That means you are in agreement with that sin and therefore you have not repented because repentance means you change your mind. You turn from thinking this is okay to knowing that it is wrong and that Christ is against it. And then you do what? You walk away from that thing. And Lord, I give it to you. I'm dying to this thing. All right, let's read it. Mark chapter 4, 14. I'm going to read them because there's a lot of uh, prophetess. I'll read them. Okay. It says, look, he's, he's, he's explaining a, a, a parable. He said, there was a man who went to sow some seed. He sowed some by the wayside, some in thorny ground, some on good ground, right? Some in, in, in different types of ground. And now in verse 14, he's going to explain what it means. He said, okay, watch me. The sower is the word. The sower, excuse me, sows the word. The person that is planting the seed, it is equivalent. The seed is the word. It represents the word of God. And these that are they by the wayside where the word is sown, he says, this, these are the people by the wayside. He says, the word is planted in them. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away that word, which have been sown in their hearts. The first person, watch me, these are the, these are the, part, the second sign is the signs of the heart. And I'm going to give you four different ones, okay? So watch me. We're talking about people that think they're saved and are not. False converts. These first group of people are people who hear. They heard it. I get it. But guess what? Satan comes and takes it away. I love, oh, glory to God, this is good. So he said, nope. Give it here. And he takes it away. The second group, the second uh, type of person when it comes to the heart, he says, these likewise are they which are stone, sown on stony, stony ground. He said, these people are they that have heard the word and receive it. Watch it. Immediately, they receive it with gladness. Are y'all looking at that? And they have no root in themselves. And so they only endure for a time. But afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises against them for the word's sake, immediately they are offended and they walk away. Are y'all hearing me? So the first group, they hear the word and Satan comes and takes it. They can't, they can't get it. That's why when you're talking to them about it, you're talking to them about the word, they just look at you, they can hear you. And they're like, yeah, I, I hear it. Yeah, I know this is right. But their heart is still, by the way, they, they, they got wayward hearts. <laughs> are y'all hearing me? They have wayward hearts. They have hearts that are fluctuating. They're kind of in. Yeah, I know God is real. I know my mother talked about the Lord, but they are on their way to hell. They went and got baptized as a kid, but it means nothing. The second group are they that have a hard heart. And it's not broken up all the way. So when the seed is sown, they receive it and they happy. Look at the scripture. Did they receive the word of God? Y'all talk back to me. Did they receive the word of God? Yes, sir. Yes. They received yes, it. They came down. They went gay to preach in their hand. They went to the altar. Mm -hmm. I receive it. And he says they endure for a little bit. Yes. They endure for a small moment. A small moment. But then when persecution arises, these are your church hoppers, mm. <laughs> your ministry hoppers. They they're very easily offended because the moment you point to their I issue, they, they skedaddle. Why? Because we are in the Burger King age of Christianity. Wow. <laughs> you know, you can Burger King, you can have it 
your All way. Right. Yep. Yes, <laughs> so if I, if you if you make me mad, I can go here. This pastor will tell me exactly what I want to hear. They don't say that. But that's what they mean. I, I feel this pastor, but I don't feel that pastor. What they're saying is what this guy is saying is tickling my ears. He is not dealing with my real issue. You have an issue you haven't yet repented of. You never repented. And the Lord said this particular heart is an easily offended heart. Man, that is the church. Man, y'all don't know yes, how of people get offended. Uh, if we were talking to a bunch, if I said what I just said now in front of a bunch of pastors, they would be shouting and jumping and doing cartwheels. Do you know why? You know how many times we've heard, I just don't know because I can't believe they said that to me. And then they walk off. They just disappear. And the Lord says this heart, because of any type of persecution, any type of adversity, Woo. They are good as long as nothing is pressing against them. As soon as Satan comes against them, as soon as their family not feeling with what they're saying, as soon as the pastor tell them they are out of order or if anything try to come to them, they do what? They shrivel under it. That's because they have no solid foundation and they aren't really saved. They're religious. All right. The third one, the scripture says in verse 18, he calls it the thorny heart. He says, these are people who hear the word in verse 19, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust, underline that word lust, that's everything from drugs, what you desire, women, men, uh, whatever you desire, money, the bag. That's what they call it today, right? The bag. Right. They had different money. We used to call it Skrilla. <laughs> In my day, and then before that, they call it ends, right? Cheddar, uh, whatever you want. You can go all the way back to the 60s. For the love of money, people will kill from, steal from their brother. For the love, right? It's been, it's been, you can go all the way back to Jesus was betrayed for a couple of, couple of dollars. Yes, sir. They was yes, calling sir. it for my silver, my silver dollars, right? They was, they was, they've been <laughs> betraying people as long as they've had money, money, riches, Anything that you desire that is not like God, he says, this thing enters in and it chokes the word. It stops you. It, it severs your ability to go forward. He's saying these people are not his. And finally, it's the good ground. The good ground in verse 20 bears fruit. It bears fruit. You can't tell me you're God's child, but your fruit is murder, death, Drugs. Well, look, anything that is not like the word of God. I fear that in our day, it's so dark that what we think is light mm -hmm. is actually darkness. <laughs> you know, you could go. I'll, I'll give you an example. A good friend of mine, he served. Uh, he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. Great man of God. Our, my, our brothers. Right. My wife and I. And he was telling me that he, he went to Kuwait when he first went to Kuwait with the military. When he got off the plane, it was 140 degrees. And he said, oh, my gosh, this is so hot. This is so hot. But then after a while, after a while, at nighttime, the heat drops down to 100. He said when the heat dropped down to 100, they would put on winter coats. They were freezing. 100 degrees was freezing. Because they were in 140 degree weather so much, 100 degrees felt like freezing temperatures. He said, and when we came back to the San Diego, that's where he was stationed, he said, it's 85 degrees. Oh, they had parkas. You know the parkas, the winter coats, with they had skull caps on. And the people was like, what's wrong with you guys? What happened was his body adjusted. And today we've seen so much darkness. Every billboard has a half naked woman. Every, every billboard has a cigarette or a drink. Or now that every billboard you drive around in the city, it has a weed dispensary. And you don't even think anything when you smell it. It's nothing wrong. With, it's just weed. It's just, and the Lord is looking like you all are so dark that what you think is light is pitch black to me. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. I hope y'all hearing what man. I'm saying, man. I'm, yes, sir. I, I hope you are y'all getting what I'm saying. Y'all shake your head. Amen. Yes, sir. Man, I, I just wanted to make sure this is, these are four signs of the heart. You got to look. So 
to, to break it down very simply, if you find it where you see somebody and they're happy for a second, they walk in with the Lord and then they drop off. You say, uh oh, <laughs> the, no roots. The word was being spoken, but it never dug in. You have the other people who Satan comes and take it. These are the people a lot of times you see them deceived all the time. They're always looking for new knowledge. That's Satan. Satan does that. Hidden knowledge. That's what he did to Eve. God knows if you bite this tree, you'll know something nobody else knows. So you'll see him saying, yeah, man, God is real, but you know Allah and you know Buddha and you know the, the I'm a Moorish. I'm a Moor because the Moor, Moorish temple says you can worship whatever, just know the science. and the, uh, the devil is taking every word that God spoke, took it out of your heart. And the only way to do is to come in repentance. And when you come in repentance, you will then come and say, Lord, I lay it all down. It's wrong because your word says it's wrong. I lay down Islam. I lay down more science temple. I lay down uh, Buddhism. I lay down new age. I lay down all of my desires, my sexual de habits, my sweet tooths. I, I lay down all of this. This where weed is wrong because your Bible said pharmacia is witchcraft. It puts my brain in an altered state where Satan, Lucifer, can come in and mess with me. Lord, I need good ground. And in order for my ground to be good, you have to till the ground. You got to dig up all of the rocks and kick them out of there. Because if you plant a seed where there's rocks and thorns and thistles and things in your garden, guess what's going to happen? Your crop will not grow. And the Lord says you will never grow until you evict all things, hallelujah, from your garden that is not like God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Amen. I hope y'all hear me. I don't, I, don't, I don't want the people to see y'all. Y'all, some of y'all ain't, they can't see nobody. So I put my face up on the screen. Amen. So the third sign is the sign of leaving. This is part three, the sign of leaving. If you leave the faith, you ain't his. You exit stage, right? I'm not talking about backsliding. That's a totally different thing. Let me prove it to you. Go with me to 1 John chapter 2. Verse 18. Prophet is I'm gonna have you read it. We'll alternate. Okay. You read this scripture, this, this 18 and 19, and then I'll take the next one. Watch First this. John 2 and 8 or 18? 2 and 18. Watch this, y'all. The sign of leaving. I'm telling you right now, if you want to know of a person, the, the mark of a person that's not a believer, they bounce. Watch this. First John 2, 18. Little children. It is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby is, we know. Go ahead. That it is the last time. This is an Antichrist spirit. Makes you leave. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Hmm. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Ah. Uh -huh. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. They were not with at all with us. <laughs> they were not with us. They bounced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He talks about the Antichrist. And he talks about, he says, many antichrists, which means that it is a spirit that has gotten into the people. And this was happening in Paul's day. And immediately he talks about leaving. They went out from us. They can't mm -hmm. tolerate it. That's why they don't want to be with the believers. Isn't it funny that they say they want to not go to hell, but they don't want to go with believers? The truth is they don't want to go to heaven. They have nothing in common with heaven. I'm telling you, and you have to be real with them. Brother, I love you, but if you pass, you are going to fry. And I don't want you to be tortured throughout all eternity. I do not want you to be in. You are an enemy of God. Do you know the Bible says he is angry with the wicked every day, every single day. God is angry with the wicked. The Bible says we had enmity between God and man. Enmity is hatred. There was a beef. And that's why the Bible says that by the blood of Jesus, we have peace with God. He's not talking about serenity. I have serenity with God. No, 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 no. He's saying peace like 
two warring factions. You don't, you didn't, this is what's crazy. Have you ever been beefed out with somebody and didn't know that you was beefed out with them? They mad at you and you don't even know they're mad at you. This is how it is with God. There are people who don't even know that God is their enemy. Mm -hmm. God considers them an enemy. They are solely on Satan's side. Everything that Satan does, they do. Everything that Satan says, they say. Everything that Satan believes, they believe. And they don't know that by default, by doing that, they by not accepting Jesus Christ, they have rejected him automatically by default. Man, mm -hmm. and this causes them to be sentenced. Their name is already on the roll for eternal damnation. And God is waiting. He's long suffering, not willing that any of them should perish. I don't know if this bothers you, but some of you all might have children that their name is on the roll for hell. Some of you all might have cousins and brothers and sisters that's on the roll for eternal damnation. And if that doesn't bother you, then you should check your birth certificate too. Because God cares so much that the entirety of the Bible points towards one thing, the salvation of all mankind with Jesus on the cross. And if you know this information, you got to let them know to come to God. You can come to him as you are, but you're going to have to give up every single thing to be his. You got to die. <laughs> the Bible, man, I wish I had time to go through Romans. Romans tells, he said, he that is dead is free from sin. Dead, what? Not dead physically, but dead to sin. I am yeah. dead to the devil. I am dead to my old life. And the Bible says an indicator that a person is not saved is they, 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 they leave. Well, 1 Timothy 4.1 says this, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some would depart from the faith. You can walk away from the faith. If I come to Jesus and say, yes, oh, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, let me give this to you very plainly. The reason people don't know what I'm telling you right now is because they think that salvation is an event. Write it down. They think salvation is an event. Oh, yeah, I got saved. So if you go to the majority of people today, I never forget when I was being taught how to witness. The first thing they said was, don't just ask somebody if they're saved. Don't just ask somebody if they're saved. And the reason you don't do that is because almost everybody think they're, thinks they're saved. If you if you say to them, hey, man, you say, yeah, I got saved, man, when I was a kid. OK, so they have eternal life. That's because you think it's something you can check a uh, check in the box. That's not true. Jesus said you got to take up your cross and follow him. If you never died to sin and you never repented, how you going to how you going to be saved? And you still think the exact same way you you thought when you were going to hell, you are not saved. You said a prayer. That was not heard. You know, the Bible says that God does not hear the prayer of sinners. He only hears the, the heart of a repentant person, a person that has changed their mind. Then he says, oh, they're ready to be saved. Then he hears them. He hears their call. He saves them. And then they become a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. They are no longer bound. They are born again. Amen. You start seeing fruit. They change. Amen. And you got to watch the fruit. Because they could endure for a little while. Didn't we just read that? And then fall off. They could look like they're saved. Oh, I receive it with joy immediately. But then after a while, you're like, where did they go? That's why in the church, you have the same story. I got saved when I was a kid. But when I got older, I, I started selling dope. I started killing. Uh, right? You're like, nobody wants to raise their hand and say, you probably weren't saved. That's the truth. And then you, you, the Lord, you have an encounter with God for real. And you turn to him and you say, for God, I live, for God, I die. I'll never go. And you know, for a fact, watch me. Some of this happened. Some of this might've happened to you. You literally say, this was different than it was the last time. You know why? Because the last time was a false conversion. It was fake. Watch me. This is why Jesus warns that there will be wheat 
and tear. Tear is, it looks just like wheat. It grows where wheat grows, but it's poisonous and it's fake. And Jesus said, let them grow up together. Don't try to stop it. Don't try to identify it. You can identify it for yourselves, but I can't look at you and try to identify. I can't look and say, oh, sister, sister, so-and-so, you, you're not saved. I can't do that. Only God can. I don't know if you got saved or not, but guess what? You know, amen. You and I know, you know, yeah, I, I'm saved, but, but <laughs> when you hear people say that, yeah, I'm, we say we all saved, but come on, we can still, when they start doing that, just be like, oh, okay, God bless y'all. I'm not going to say you of tear, but you, you tearish. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I'm not going to say you a false convert, but <clears throat> if you had initials, it should be FC. False con. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to call it out like that, but I'm going I'm to go around the people that don't say we're saved, but there is no but. When you put but, you cancel out everything that was before. We are saved. And even when I mess up, we all still do. The believer looks at himself and says, ah, oh, woe is me. This is wrong. Father, I come back to you. The non-believer, watch me, when they are false convert, they feel bad too. But they start to withdraw from God. Why? Because that's the spirit of Antichrist. Paul said in 1 John 2, they were not from us because they left. Uh, they walk away. They depart from the faith. They leave. That's what the ungodly do. The believer says, ah, I've sinned. I must go towards the Father. Even when I ran away from God, I never forget, I, I Ran all the way on the other side of the world. I got to run away. I'm tired of this. I knew I couldn't go. I knew I couldn't go away from him. Some people would say something and it would be incorrect scripturally and I was correcting them. <laughs> In sin. <laughs> Talking about it. Why? Because I just can't hear you mess up my God's word. He was still my God. And when he found me in Japan, he asked me, who are you? I knew exactly who I was. And I knew who I belonged to. And I was perpetrating like I was a false convert. The Lord said, boy, get back over here and pop me on my butt. And I went on my way and I ain't looked back since. I've had some ups. I've had some downs. I've had some shortcomings. I've had some failures. But I know that for God, I can't turn. If I was in hell and they gave me a way out of hell by denying Jesus Christ, I would have to burn. I can't. The old folks used to say, I can't deny them because I know too much about them. I didn't know what they meant until I knew him for myself. He's not a sermon. He's not a, 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 a character in a book. He meets me every day. He walks with me. Man, there I go with them old songs. He talks with me, and he, he, he treats me like I'm what? His own. This is who I have. All right. This is my last scripture to you. This is the smoking gun that people are say think they saved right now. I'm going to say it like this. They're saved on the books. <laughs> Their name is on the roll. Where do you go? What church do you go to? I go to um, Kingdom Ambassadors. See, I'm not going to use somebody else's church. I'm going to use Kingdom Ambassadors because I don't want to mess around and call somebody church's name. But, oh, yeah, I go there under the, the auspices. You don't even know what that means, but you're using it. I'm under the auspices of the Reverend Apostle Dr. John Guy and a Prophetess Dr. Guy. Ooh, that, ooh they sound. Yes, they're very anointed. Mm, I, and the word, ooh, oh, Lord, the word, the word. Don't this sound like everybody used me? And then next thing you know, you say, what happened with such and such? Oh, that MF told me that blah, blah, blah. And I said, eh. Jesus said, blessings and cursings cannot come out of the same place. You can't have a tree that has good and bad fruit. If it got bad fruit, it's a bad tree. If it has good fruit, it's a good tree. Now, sometimes you might get mad and mess up, but a real believer, it don't just flow off of your lips, and then you just cool with it. You say, ah, Father, <sighs> He says, okay, I know nobody can tame the tongue, but that's a different tongue than a, a, nun, a person claiming to be a saint but will cuss you out in a New York minute and feel nothing about it and say you shouldn't have talked to me like that anyway, and that's why you got going off on. That is an abomination to the Lord and a symptom, hear me, a symptom of a, a deeper problem that they're actually not his. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> 
I'm just playing. Some of y'all are like, ooh, he just went back to about 82 on that one. Go with me to Matthew 7, and I'm going to say this scripture, and then I'm going to open it up for questions and comments, and then I'll get out of your hair. Amen. Matthew 7, 21. Prophetess, read that for me. Watch this, y'all. This is the Matthew, smoking gun. Go ahead. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Stop. But ooh. Stop right there. He just said, Jesus said, you can say Lord, Lord to him. Call him Lord. And not enter the kingdom of heaven. Is that or is that not? The truth. Yes. Come on, let me see your hands so because they're looking at you. How many of y'all know if that's the <laughs> truth, give me a one. Amen. If it's false, give me a two. So I'm only seeing ones. G did not Jesus just say, not everybody. So that means some people will call him Lord and, be, and enter into the kingdom of heaven. Others will call him Lord and do what? Not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But right. what does he say, prophetess? But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. He that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Verse 20. And the Bible tells us in another place that this is the will of God, even the, your sanctification. Sanctification means to be clean and set apart. You must be different than everyone else. You must be, not try. You must be. And we're going to teach on this in the coming days that it's very easy to, to put on righteousness, to be holy. Very easy. You're going to see it because we think when he says be holy, he means that you need to start. Uh, uh, I got to get rid of and then I'm and then that's going to make me holy. Nope. You clean yourself from those things because your brain has to get used to not doing them. But it is God who makes you holy. We're going to talk about that later. But I want you to see this now. He says he that does the will of my father. Verse 22. Verse 22, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Uh-huh. And in thy name have cast out devils? Uh-huh. And in thy name have done many wonderful works? So be, you can prophesy and not be saved. Hmm. <laughs> Look at me, hear me. You can cast a demon out. Do you know why? You just have to believe what God words, God's word says. This is where the believer messes up. And, it, and it's really because when you, and I want to give a, an illustration. In witchcraft, people that practice that, they believe that these particular spells work. So they put all of their effort. They do all of these things. And because they stand on it, they begin to curse people, do all of these things, right? It's the demonic. Satan is trying to imitate how we must believe God's word. Do you, I want you to hear me. So the world uses it. I'm going to give you an example. One of the number one groups of people that tithe, give a tenth of their resources, are wealthy, secular sinners. People who might not even believe in God at all. They have found from research, scientific research, that they, they did basically a study and figured out, one of the first ones that did the study was John D. Rockefeller, some of those guys in, in that group. They found out that if you take a tenth or more of your resources and you give it to others, you, it, things come back to you. They named it, along with other things, a ungodly term called the law of attraction. It's an ungodly, it, that is ungodly. That's, a, that's a, from new age, right? God doesn't teach a law of attraction, but they use the principle. And if you just do it, if you believe that, that, if you believe that you have the authority to pray for someone to be healed, you pray for them and it'll, God will do it. You think he don't want the people to be healed? He'll use a donkey. <laughs> Amen. So look at this. Mm -hmm. You prophesy. You, how do I know that you can prophesy and not be saved? The Bible says that Saul in the Old Testament had an evil spirit on him, an evil spirit that was dwelling upon him. But the Bible says he came around the company of the prophets. The prophets were playing the instruments and creating the atmosphere of praise, a prophetic atmosphere. And when he entered into that area, that realm where they were standing, he began to prophesy also. And the people were like, is Saul the king a prophet as well? 
This is the this is the importance of our gatherings. There are specific things that God does in the gathering. All right. And that is one of them that you can come into that atmosphere. And if it is set correctly, a person can walk in and just be healed from being in the presence there. I came here and I got healed. I showed up and God began to speak to me. We have it where a lot of times when people stay with us, they dream. <laughs> I had a dream uh, 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 like one of our good friends. When we go to their house, the Lord be like, Okay, I'm going to tell you something for the, like the biggest thing in your life. Boom, every time I go there. And it's because it's an atmosphere where prayer is always happening, where fasting is always happening, and praise is always. They're not having a bunch of filth in it. They set the environment. Jeez, you can do that. So there are going to be people that you look at, and they're prophesying. They're casting out devils, doing many wondrous works. But Jesus said in verse 23 that I'm going to profess to them, I never knew you. Never. This is a false convert. How do I know it? They thought they knew him. How do I know that? They called him Lord. <laughs> Look at the scripture. Many will, verse 22, many, what does it say, prophet? It's the first thing in verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. They called him Lord. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Christ Jesus from the dead. They say that's not what it says. Yes, it does. It says if you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You confess Jesus is Lord. That's what that means. And then you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. So you're saying, well, wait a minute. If they did that, why aren't they saved? Because they had the wrong type of belief. Write it down. Boy, this is it. This is the answer. They have the wrong type of belief. They think that if they believe, yes, Jesus died and rose again for me. That's not what he means. That's head knowledge. Like, I believe that currently Joseph Biden is the president. Yeah, Joseph Biden was, is the president. No, no, no. That's head knowledge. The scripture, when it uses that word believe, that God has raised Jesus from the de dead, it means to put your trust in it. Meaning that I trust in the fact that your resurrection from the dead saves and secures me for eternal salvation. And because you have done this, I'm putting my trust for my entire life in your hands. I don't belong to myself. I'm not living my best life because it's not my life. I died. Hallelujah. And I was buried. Matter of fact, I was buried. Did y'all come to my funeral? It was my, my baptism. I was buried with him in baptism and risen in newness of life. And when I came up, the old me was gone. In the life that I now live, I don't live by myself, but I live it by the faith of the son of God. That faith means the trust. They know that Jesus died and rose again, but they haven't trusted it. They haven't trusted in him. Oh, it's huge. The devils know that Jesus rose from the dead. You think the devil don't know that Jesus got up from the grave? How many of y'all know that the devil has, the devils called Jesus Lord? Yes, sir. First thing they said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You're the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus, shut up. That's what Jesus told him. Shut up and come out. You know who I am, but you don't know me. <laughs> that's why on that day he's gonna look at him and say i don't know you we don't commune together in prayer i don't speak to you and you know my voice you know your bishop's voice you know your apostle's voice you know that you love that church and how they're teaching but you've never been filled with my holy mm -hmm. ghost you've never been stamped approved mm -hmm. by god glory to god you gotta hear what i'm saying this is the difference between a real believer in a church, a pew member. Amen. Praise the Lord. So look, I'm going to open it up for questions. I hope y'all got some. I know I at least got one. Amen. I'm opening it up now, and I'm going to leave it online for you guys to see it. And look, if you got questions online, put your questions right there. If you're still watching, I don't know if there's anybody watching. Yes, some people watch. Put it in there now about this, about false converts, how to know. Well, that's one question I know somebody should probably ask. How do you know if you are a false convert or not? All right. Any questions? I think that's a good place to start, Apostle. 
How you, does someone know? You trying to help them out. I was, you know I was finna hang it up. You know I hang okay. up. I hang up. Y'all don't give me no questions. I hang it up. All right, bye. You ain't got no question. Click. Is that is there any questions? Okay. Praise the Lord. Well, look, I'll answer your no. question, prophetess, and then I'll end hand. it. Okay, go ahead. Hand. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sister Ebony. Well, you answered my question from earlier when I called you, so thank you. No problem. <laughs> Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So what uh so what signs would you say would indicate that you're not saved? That would indicate you're not saved? Well, well so the signs that I said, you leave you you, you don't want to be in the fellowship, you feel uncomfortable, you don't feel apart. The reason you don't feel apart is because you're not made of the same stuff. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um if you're removed Removed from the church and churchy environment and can't stand. Mm. You know, you, <laughs> I had to learn some things about myself that I was not as strong as I was when I went into the Navy. I was telling a guy about that. I, I you go into the Navy and when we go into some countries, like I don't know what the girls are treated like, but my wife knows she's in the military too. When the when we pull in port, it's literally women that look like supermodels. Screaming and yelling and clapping and take a tough man to walk away from that, right? It, it, it's just the truth. And if you're not real strong and you just been, hey, hallelujah, you're just used to that. There ain't no organs <laughs> playing in the background when you're over there. Next thing you know, you're falling. Uh, uh, I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, we, you were weak. You were standing on the fact that you were together with other believers, Mm-hmm. But were you strong enough to stand up to the devil? That's that's a good indicator. Mm-hmm. Some signs I will give you guys signs as far as like to that Jesus gave us to confirm who we are. One of the the okay. number one signs is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna come to you, Sister Jerisa. I'll come to you next. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he says that he gave the Spirit as a guarantee for our mm-hmm. in, for mm-hmm. our inheritance. It's when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and are filled with the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit essentially saying, you are my beloved son or daughter in whom I'm well mm-hmm. pleased. How do I know that? Because the day that Jesus was water baptized, <laughs> the Holy Spirit came down upon him like a dove. And according to Luke, he was filled with the Holy Ghost in Luke chapter four. And the, mm-hmm. the scripture says when God came down upon him immediately, when the Holy Spirit came down upon him and he was filled, the, God spoke from heaven. This is my beloved son mm-hmm. in whom I'm well pleased. That's what he did as a sign that he, that, that he was his. And the same thing, the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then God began to speak. He spoke through them. It's called the tongues. <laughs> God began to speak. And then Paul tells us, with stampering tongues and with another lips, will my God speak to this people? God is doing it. That's God speaking through you. And he gives us the baptism of the Holy Ghost as a stamp of approval. The Bible says you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, he stamps your approval. So that's why I tell everybody, if you ain't been filled, you need to be on your face. When I, was, when I learned this, I was saying, Father, am I yours? <laughs> you, said, you said, if a man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. This, what he's saying there, if you ain't got that stamp of approval, you don't know. How do you know? Well, I feel, I believe it. The devil's belief. The difference between us and the devil is that we have the spirit of the living God. He has the spirit of darkness and damnation. He has the spirit of the Antichrist. He is the spirit of, of, of evil. But the Holy Spirit, righteous, and we, it is our job to pursue that. That's the, the number one stamp. And then the Bible says we know we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. They love to be around believers. If you want to know if somebody's not saved, they do not like to be around real believers. They will be yes. around those believers that like to talk about everything but God. But as soon as you talk about God, you'll even see people who are Christians tell mm-hmm. you you do too much. That's mm-hmm. usually an indicator that, uh-oh, <laughs> I usually don't say anything, but I'll just, you know, when I preach, I tell them my favorite word. Check your birth certificate. You better find out who's your daddy. 
Who is your father? Is it Satan <laughs> or is it God? Amen. If my wife and I get together and have a baby and the baby is, comes out and he's Chinese, I'm going to say, wait a minute. I can have Chinese in my bloodline, but fully Chinese? Uh, somebody, somebody lying and it ain't me. Amen. My wife would be looking at me like, he ain't Chinese. If you do an artificial insemination, because my wife ain't going to cheat on me, but if you do an artificial insemination and the baby comes out and the baby is white, then we're going to look and say, well, wait a minute. He can have a little bit in there. He's supposed to have a little bit. <laughs> but he, this nose ain't going to help for that. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. This nose is the, uh, he has to look like me. He has to, do you hear me? He has to move okay. like me. After a while, I look and say, boy, you act just like, come on now. You look just like your dad. I look up and I'm saying stuff. I, I don't even get, we don't have children, but I look at my dog. I beat all the bark off you. And I said, my daddy used to say that. <laughs> I move like him. I walk like him. I start talking like him. I talk like my mother. But if I don't talk like them, I don't move like them. It's supposed to be genetic. I could imitate. That's good. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Brother Celine, look, I'm going to use Brother Celine. He's right there looking at it. He could, he could get a young man, and a young man begins to imitate him and say, you know what? Man, I just love how he moves. He just act like him. But his son, Aiden, he, he don't have to do nothing. If he, if he just left, Salim could leave for 20 years and come back, and that boy will be doing stuff that Salim does because it's in his DNA. And when we get born again, hallelujah, and the mm -hmm. blood of Jesus Christ is now our new blood, guess what? We will move like God. We will walk like God. The fruit mm -hmm. of being having a relationship with the Holy Ghost means I'll Thank live God. and move and yes. act like it. The things I used to say, I, don't, I talk like my daddy. Mm -hmm. I say words like... Like we bind and we loose. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare. That's what my father says. He calls those things which are not as though they were. And if I don't do that, I got to say, wait a minute. Am I? And I, I, I did it before. When I was, uh, 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 I said, Lord, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me check my birth certificate, Lord. If I'm not, you need to adopt me right away. I'm here, Lord. I come humbly. <laughs> what do I need to do? And I would not leave. Until And then when he filled me, I said, I got a guarantee. Now, I knew I was saved before because I love the brother. I love the, But then when he mm -hmm. filled me, I said, uh-uh, I got a biblical mm -hmm. guarantee. He wrote it in the script that it mm -hmm. is the earnest. It is the seal. I'm Watch this, y'all. I'm sealed, stamped mm -hmm. until the day of redemption. What day is that, Brother David? You know what day that is? It's when Jesus comes back to redeem me at the last trumpet. When the trumpet blows, I know Great. I'm going up. And if I die, just so happen to die before he comes back, even in the grave, when the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ... <gasps> I got to get up. Why? Because I'm sealed. You can't see it because it's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Man, I feel like shouting and jumping right there. It's the spirit of the living God that is on me. Hallelujah. This is why Satan, the Antichrist, mimics God and has the people to take the stamp or the mark of the beast. He's imitating what we have. We have something in us that gives us access to all of the resources of heaven. Mm -hmm. Whew, glory to God. All right, go ahead, Brother David. Hallelujah. Or Sister Erica, whichever one. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of a story behind it. <laughs> so my, well, I was talking to my mom about my brother and us praying for him and continuing to do so. Now, we online. I'm just letting you know we're still streaming. That's fine. Okay. Because he's not saved or whatnot. Okay. And my mom came back to me, and she she was looking for his baptism certificate. Mm -hmm. I mean, she looked and she looked for weeks to find his baptism certificate to come back to me to say, you know, indeed, he was saved. So it's so ingrained. We've talked since, but it's so ingrained in... Uh, the Baptist um, church and I was there that you believe and, it's, and it says it it says if you believe that he died and he rose for you and which is true how, yeah yeah how do we 
began to start to break that 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 down, get them to under to to understand the difference. Um, I'm not. What I do is this is what Jesus said. All those that will hear the truth, all those that believe the truth will hear me. <laughs> he just said it. And the Holy Spirit does the rest. The Holy Spirit does it. You can look at this. Jesus said, unless I draw, unless my father draws them, they can't come to me. You can drag them down. They can go down and uh, say a prayer, say the prayer of salvation. The, you can say the prayer of salvation and get saved, or you can say it and not. You can get in the water. It's not, I want y'all to understand this. It is not when the Bible says that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We have one word for belief. Mm -hmm. They didn't. Almost every other language has different words. Just like we say, and this is why they say the English language is so deceptive. And it's so hard to, to win in court because you can say something and it means something different, right? If you're talking to somebody and you say for, that word is loaded. You can mean the number four. You can mean what could I do for you, <laughs> right? If I say some, you oh well, the sum of two plus two. No, I meant give me some food. Right. Our words are deceptive. If we say I love you, this is how guys get over it today. Girl, I love you. I, I'm in love with you. And they break up so quick. But then you he be talking to his homeboys, man. I love the Cowboys. I love the Lakers. I love my dog. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Do you love them all the same? Do you love the girl? No, I love my car. I ain't giving up my car for nobody. Be like, well, wait a minute. You love the car more than your girl. <laughs> yeah, I do. She don't know that because <laughs> if she did, she would be gone, right? So they mean something different. When G when he said believe, we said, oh, yeah, like believe something exists. Do you believe in God? I believe God exists. Do you trust mm -hmm. God with your, your whole life, with your body? Mm -hmm. You say you got saved. Saved from what? Saved from lust? Oh, you just want to be saved from hell. I need to check this block so I can get into heaven. Every time you try to do that, that means you're not saved. A hundred percent of the time. I think, God, please, God, please give me. Lord, just, I'm just, uh, you already in trouble. The thief on the cross got saved at the last minute. But look at what he said. He looked at his, her, his partner in crime and confessed in front of everybody. Nobody even knows that they ever confessed. He said, you and I belong here, man. Mm-hmm. But this dude, this guy didn't do anything. And then he looked at him and said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, that means I know that what you said about yourself was right. He said, can you just remember me? He didn't even ask for entrance. He said, I don't deserve to be in there, but can you just remember me? I'm nothing. I'm nothing. He is repented and humble. And Jesus looked at him and said, this day. <laughs> to, today today is going to happen when i say into thy hand i commend my spirit you going with me you're going to be with me in paradise i gotta yes. go back because in three days i gotta raise from the dead but you're today this day you're going to be with me in paradise the other dude died and went to the pit of hell still burning the other guy did all the same sins but he trusted he trusted that what jesus said was true that he was the king and he was more than the king of the Jews because his kingdom is even there after death. Hmm. Do you see what I mean? So the, the, the key is this. I can tell them everything. Like I could disprove right now that I can show you in scripture where people had to get baptized again, which means that just because you got baptized the first time <laughs> don't mean anything. The scripture says that Paul walked upon some people in Acts chapter eight and he said unto them, have you been, have you, uh, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? They said, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. He said, well, what was you baptized in? He, they said, by John. And the Bible says in Jesus th th that Paul then baptized them again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. They were baptized the first time, but he baptized them again in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then laid his hands upon them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's in the scripture. 
but it, you got to trust the scriptures. And I believe that God will do it. I believe it. I believe God is getting ready to do miracles throughout all our families. Amen. And it doesn't matter. Even if we just read where the scripture says in, in uh, first Timothy, let me bring it up. First Timothy chapter four, verse one, that people can depart from the faith. So you could have gotten, did all of that stuff and just walked away. Jesus said that some people will do what? Receive it for a while with joy. Did we yes. just read it and they get up and they do what? Walk away. And then Paul, here, here's, here's Paul saying, well, why did they leave us? Because they was never with us. There's dudes right now that went down there and said, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that God has raised Christ Jesus from the dead and I am saved. They got baptized the next day or the next week and their whole family came out. They got a certificate, baptism certificate. Thank you, Jesus. They was in church their whole life. And then when they got old, they went to prison and became a Muslim and confessed to be a Muslim. You must confess that there is no God but Allah and his prophet Muhammad. Until you do that, you are not a Muslim. The moment you do that, there is no God but Allah. You have literally just said that Yahweh is not God. Because when Moses asked, who do, who do I tell them your name is? He didn't say no Allah. <laughs> he said, Yahweh. It's the simulation of our breath because he breathed into man and man became a living soul, a tetragrammaton with four letters, four letters representing the four letters of our, our DNA code. Allah don't got four letters. And you do. <laughs> Amen. So Allah ain't God. Who's God? Yahweh. He said who he was. I'm the four letters. What do you mean four letters? That don't make no sense. Yes, it does. Wait till you discover DNA. Wait till you discover a uh, 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 dianucleic acid. When you learn it, you can say, oh, he's, he is God. <laughs> he's God on levels I didn't even know. He's more than just my breath. He is the deep, very DNA. I was made in his image. He is God. So you have people that have done that, and their parents are saying, it's okay, baby. You got saved. You think he's letting, you in, he letting them in heaven? No. They're going to say to him on that day when he returns, Lord, Lord. He's going to say, I never knew you. You went to church, said some words, and left and went and served another false god. Depart from me. We, didn't, we never read that. He said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. And he sent them into the place, the Bible says, where they're weeping and gnashing of teeth. But let me give you all a glorious statement. I'm believing that God is getting ready to do a revival in this coming up year. And the same people who walked away from the faith, the same people who went through the motions and never really got saved, they're going to be down upon their face saying, there is no God but Yahweh and his son, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua, the son of the living God. And I'm never going back. You're going to be like, boy, you out preach me. You didn't learn more word than me. I'm believing that God is going to give them an encounter. People who are full of demons are going to be cast out of them and they're going to be soundly saved in this generation. And when they get saved, Sister Erica, you know what they're going to say? You waited. That's what that song says that Travis Green said. You, you waited for me. Just for me. I should have died. If I died, I would, if I died, I'm just thinking about me. If I died, I would I would have never got a chance to say what I'm saying right now. If I had died, I'd never forget I was drunk in Japan. And a guy pushed me and I was drunk. We were on a like three stories up. I almost fell over the banister head first. And a guy grabbed me at the last second. That was God. God spared my what if I fell? <laughs> Broke my neck. Everybody back here would have said, Oh, he was good. He he did. No, I wasn't. I had departed. I had walked away from Jesus Christ and everybody would have not known that I was burning in hell. The Lord told me once, he said, do you know what they do to prophets in hell? Do you know what they do to apostles and pastors in hell? Do you know what they do to them? They waiting all oh, you so stupid. You can't, you, you left him. He was your only saving grace. Now we got you and nobody can get you out a million ways in no way out. Hallelujah. But the Lord, he waited. He kept me. <laughs> He kept me and I made it back safely home to the day of my repentance was at hand. And I turned to my God, who was the God of my father, who was the God of my mother. And now I'm here today. That's what's going on. If God did it for you, Erica, 
He's going to do it for him. He's going to do it for cousins. He's going to do it for poo-poo. He's going to do it for children. He's going to do it. I don't know if there's nobody named poo-poo, but he's going to do it for everybody knows somebody named Pookie, though. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that was my nickname. He's going to do it for Pookie and all of them, Ray Ray and all of them. He's going to do it. Amen. All right, so I'm going to leave you all alone. I'm going to let uh, Brother Richard go ahead, and then we'll we'll get out of your hair. I've been all right, talking. quick question. Um, what do you say for those who probably haven't really experienced the um, – the um the feeling of the spirit as you say and as you explained and but they have they do truly trust in the lord and they do by their and it shows in other actions by their transformation of their life and how they actually seek the lord is it still the possibility that they may not be saved because they haven't been filled fully yet the uh well they haven't been filled Right. Amen. <laughs> they, it's not like they get a partial feeling. You know what I mean? They haven't been filled. They haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can be saved without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm. but the Holy Spirit is the guarantee. That's what the Bible says. It is the earnest of our inheritance. That word earnest, it literally means like the earnest money. You know how when you buy a house, mm -hmm. they tell you pull out earnest money? That's the part everybody hates. <laughs> Amen. I have earnest money and down payment. I just uh -huh. can I just can I show you my bank account? Uh uh. We need some actual dollars. And when you put it down, the earnest money says you are proceeding in good faith. When the Lord fills us with the Holy Spirit initially, He is telling you we can proceed in good faith that you have an inheritance with me. <laughs> Amen. That's why we need to seek Him to be filled, always seeking. Not passively seeking. The thing that we do, though, the most is we seek them and then we get tired of it and then it don't happen. I was like, when I figured that out, that that was the earnest of my inheritance, I'm not saying that you're not saved. The Bible does say if you have not the spirit of God, you are none of his. But what he's saying, the, 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 the context of that is him not saying that if you don't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. What he's saying right. is if you, if you go and you can't, like the Lord just does not. He won't. Forever? Mm -hmm. That's what I said. When it was taken, I felt like it was, there's no such thing as too long. But I felt like for me, I said, Lord, hold on. I know I'm yours. I trust in you for salvation. Amen. And I right. know that I love the brethren. I have the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit means when the Lord comes to live in you. I always tell you guys there's a difference. It's like in the temple, they would bring the Ark of the Covenant that had God's presence in it. You couldn't touch it. If you touched it, you died because God's presence was in it. He told them to put it in the third level of the temple. That's like you. Body, body is the outer court. Soul, which is your mind, is the inner court. The holies of holy, the third level, is your spirit. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, just like the, the Ark was in the temple. But God told them, you can't use that temple until I fill it. And he, he, when they dedicated the temple, read it, look it up, go and type in dedication of the Jewish temple and every scripture in the Bible, when he did it, the Bible says, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple and a cloud came down and the priest could not minister because of the cloud, the cloud filled it. And then after that day, from that, once that happened, they began to use it. That's why Jesus told them, don't go and do anything. Wait in Jerusalem until you be endowed from power on high. I'm not using that temple to the fullest of its ability until that temple is filled with my spirit. So what I say to that person is seek with all. There is no, there was no plan B for me. I'm not going to speak for everybody else. Right. The heck I'm going to be doing anything else <laughs> other than, and I ain't mean to go that hard, but that's the truth. <laughs> right, right. I'm not doing, that is number one, numero uno. It's like saying, oh, it's a shark in the water and I'm in the water, but I'm saying, man, give me my flippers. I need to use, uh, no, get me out of the, it's a shark in the water. That's mm -hmm. number one. You can't talk about, I need, oh man, I forgot my. I forgot the right. I, I wanted to wear the red swim trunks. 
Well, don't worry about it. You're not going to have none when he bites your lower half of your body off. Get right. out of the water. It's the number one thing. But we're content to do everything else. Man, I can't wait to study his work. I was, I was frustrated. I was thirsty. I was desperate. God, I want the filling of the Holy Ghost. And then it was when he revealed to me that it's the reason it took me so long is because I wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I said, what does that mean? He said, very simply, you think the Holy Spirit is a thing that you obtain. The Holy Spirit is me. God is holy and God is a spirit. <laughs> mm. So then I said, I want you then. <sighs> I said, oh, Lord, I want this again. <laughs> Glory to God. Do it again. <laughs> I want you more. I want you more. Mm -hmm. I thought the Holy Spirit was something. That's why you hear him talking about it. The people that don't have him. I caught the Holy Spirit. The devil is a lie. You ain't catch it. You catch COVID. You catch the flu. <laughs> you don't catch the Holy Ghost. And every time you catch the Holy Ghost, he does something different than what he did in the book. When mm -hmm. they received the Holy Ghost, they spake with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But when you catch the Holy Ghost, you start jumping. And oh, no, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ah, ah, and you fall down. And that's okay because it's time to do that. But that's just the joy of the Lord. Oh, mm -hmm. glory to God. I'm, I'm happy. I'm dancing. I'm shouting. And I believe in that. But don't confuse that with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And everybody mm. who's been filled, I always give them a before question and an after. I did it with you, Brother Richard. Mm -hmm. When you received the Holy Ghost, I said it was different than what you thought. You said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I thought I had before, that, was, that wasn't the same. When God filled me, I said, he is real. He was mm. more real than anything mm. I ever read in a book. He was more mm. real than any time I ever read the Bible. Mm. He was more real. He became flesh. So what I say to you who have not been filled, be filled. Mm. What you mean be filled? Do everything to position yourself to be filled. Mm. If you're praying an hour to be filled, pray too. But I don't have no time. Yes, you do. But I got to get up from work in the morning. Perfect. That'll make you desperate. <laughs> but I fasted for five days, then fast for 10. 14. If it don't work at 10 days, fast for 15. Mm -hmm. Fast for two. You're, you're signaling to the Lord, Lord, whatever I got to do. What did Jacob say? Lord, I'm, I'm leaving on this. I'm leaving. What did Jacob say? I'm not letting you leave until you bless me. That's what he grabbed the hold to Jesus, to God. He said, I'm not letting you do it. I'm not letting you leave until you bless me. You got to say, Lord, I'm not letting you leave until you feel me. I can't go another day without experiencing you. You mean there's an, an experience. I'm happy with this experience. You telling me there's more? Do you telling me that it's endless? That if I read every book, word in the Bible, that there's you still will take it and make it deeper and greater. And Lord, I need you. The song mm. says, I need thee, oh. I need thee. Every hour, I need thee, oh, bless. Oh, feel. <laughs> Me now, my Savior, I come to thee. And I'm believing this is the year where people are going to be filled oh, with the Holy Ghost. But you got to be humble. You got to repent. You got to check your birth certificate. Don't be so prideful. I knew I was saved too, but I was like, uh, the Bible says examine. Paul said it. Mm -hmm. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. I do it now as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You cannot get to the point where you smell yourself so much that you don't say, Lord, am I right? Am I righteous? Am I, am I right with you? Is there something in me that you don't like? Mm -hmm. He began, I asked him that two days ago. He began to tell me certain YouTube channels to not watch anymore. He said, you, I, uh, uh, it bothers me. I hate it. You're clogging up your mind with that mess, that doctrine. And I was doing it for research. He said, uh, it is going beyond research. Cut it off. Get rid of it. He's still Lord. But once he filled me, I said, uh. That's my guarantee, and I get my guarantee every night. So, look, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. We're going to leave it at that. I do. I'll be like, Lord, I want to be filled. Fill me, Lord. Fill me. Fill me. Amen. Is it different levels to it? Praise the Lord. 
What you say? I'm sorry. Is it different levels to it? What do you mean? Like if you was filled in a certain way, is it possible that he could fill you in a different manner than you was filled the first time? Um, let God do it. Don't expect, don't have a expectation of what he want, what he wants to do. The Bible mm -hmm. says that when he feel the initial feeling is every time God feels somebody initially in the scripture, it happened the same way. And when okay. I say the same way, the key elements, you might not hear a sound like a mighty rushing wind. You might be, might be speaking the languages that they were speaking that day. But what you find is they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake with other tongues. Okay. Every time. That's a fact. Afterwards, the Bible says that God, was, he filled the same crew again and the room was shaken and they spake the word of God with boldness. But a lot of times in scripture, he will omit certain things like not say it because it's not relevant to say. They had already mm -hmm. been filled and they already showed that they spake with tongues. So when they were okay. filled again, he didn't, he just said they, after they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they, they went and spake with boldness. Well, when you feel with the Holy Ghost, he, you always speak with tongues. So why, right. what, what's the need of saying it? Do you get what I'm saying? So, right. um, don't, don't put any restrictions on God. God will do, he could do anything. God could come and visit you literally. Mm -hmm. God could send an angel like he did to, uh, Peter, right? He can do whatever, Lord, whatever you want to do, but I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I, a believer, as we get ready to go, needs to be a prayer warrior in the tongues. The Bible says that when we pray in the Holy Spirit, and the Bible clearly says that is with the tongues. He says it in 1 Corinthians when Paul says, I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray uh, with the tongues. I will pray naturally. I will do both of them. In the book of Jude, he says that we build ourselves up on our, our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Ghost and, you, and, the, and God is speaking through you, you will go to new levels and heights and depths of God. The Bible says deep calls out to deep. When you, when you get into the depths of God, he will take you. It breeds more depth. He is endless. God is forever. He is endless. So you will go deeper and deeper and deeper in God, and you will get stronger and stronger and stronger in God. Amen. Okay. And this Amen. is the mark of a true believer. The false believer will always be on the surface. They'll be right next to the shore. They'll have one, one foot in the boat and one foot on the shore. It's called it lukewarm. I go to church. I do my thing, but I need. I got to get my liquor, and I got to also get my, right? You start, if you want to know a believer, Ask them their favorite songs. Let me shut up. I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> For real. Because when you're in the presence of God, you're not singing freaky songs. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, to, to, to our defense, when you're intimate with your wife, you probably don't want to put on, you don't want to put on Chicago mass. <laughs> Baby, is this going to get in the mood? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like, oh, Lord, your grace and mercy. <laughs> Amen. That, that might mess up the mood because you're trying to be intimate with your wife, your spouse. Amen. But yeah, if right. but the rest of the time, you need to be dealing with the things of God. Amen. So we'll leave it Amen. at that. And look, people online, I pray that this helped you out. The scriptures are there. Prophetess is going to put some of the scriptures, if you can, in the in the, the, the text on, on Zoom. I mean, on Google. No, on Facebook. And I pray that you would go and look them up and examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. And I pray in the name of Jesus that those under the sound of my voice who are not with you, Lord, would turn to you now. And brother and sister, if you are ready to turn to the Lord and trust in God seriously with all of your heart and to lean not into your own understanding, that you really want to be with him, then you must say to him, Father, I trust you. Repeat that after me if you want to do it. Father, I trust in you for my salvation. I trust and believe that you raised your son Jesus from the dead for me and that by trusting in that I have eternal life. I confess you as Lord that Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus is Lord and I turn from my sins. I know that I am wrong. The things that I've done, I'm wrong. Tell them now, tell them now, right where you are, Father, the things I've done, I'm wrong and your way is right. Save me this day. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you prayed that prayer. Let me know if you did. God bless you.